Hi, this is Odie, and today I'm going to be taking a look at PPO5M Medical Specialist from iGear, aka Ratchet. This toy comes in a beautiful glossy display box, just like the PPO5 W Weapon Specialist, featuring a uh, sort of computer rendering of Ratchet in both his modes. Not much on that side. On this side, we have a close up of Ratchet's face, and on the back, a panel showing all his accessories that's included in this box and a very long blurb about Ratchet. So let's get this open. Okay, the first thing that I found in my box was this head floating around loose. Can't seem to see a spot in the tray for it, so perhaps it was more of an afterthought, this one. Next, we've got a card, glossy on hard plastic, like a credit card. It's got the same computer and a computer uh, generated image of Ratchet on the front, along with his technical readouts and some diagrams of him there. Very nice hard plastic card. Putting that aside, we have the instructions, and on the back of the instructions, the other guys coming out, the mini warriors. So I've got, uh, already have the spray, I have the rager. I've got UFO on order, going to be Cosmos, and Hench for Brawn. Can't wait to get the um, Cogs, the Gears version, and Beachcomber. Probably end up with these two repaints somewhere down the line as well. Next, taking off this top tray, we have the Ratchet specific fittings. So the same visor, same heads-up display as Ironhide, some tools for Ratchet to use, an alternate head, hammer, and some hooks for or welding tools, perhaps. So down here, some welding tools for Ratchet's arms. We'll have a better look at them afterwards. Next, we've got the same heavy weapons that Ironhide had, along with the Ratchet toy. So let's take Ratchet out. Just like with PPO5, W, this rolls absolutely beautifully. It's so long since we've got toys that can roll like this, all four rubber wheels contacting the ground. Just the I can hear and feel the traction as that goes across. It's very nice to feel just doing that. He's got a good weight, very compact down into this vehicle mode. The vehicle, the vehicle is a deluxe size vehicle. So there's Ironhide. Uh, I've got the Henke Ratchet somewhere. Don't think it's important. This is just for scale. So very compact, being a deluxe in the alt mode. Having a close look at this guy in vehicle mode, we can see he's got some kind of medical symbol at the side. It's got a bit of an Autobot outline on it though, so it's really a custom Cybertron medical symbol, not a human one. We've got chrome plated rims, that's also beautiful. Uh, thick, solid rubber tyres. Hopefully these are never going to shrink and crack like with some toys. Thinking of you, Robots in Disguise, Optimus Prime and Ultra Magnus. Let me see if I can make out what that says on the side. It says Sigma Radials. So he's got Sigma Radials wheels. Um, the nice roll down window feature. Part of the transformation, but I like how I can see inside there. Chrome plated bumper. The correctly reversed ambulance writing across the front so that people could see that in their rear view mirrors. The bumper does come off. So he looks a little plain without the bumper. I'm glad that they chose to have this bumper attachment as an optional extra. Little mirrors on the side, so you can see that the mirrors actually have a sticker on them. I think it's a sticker. So they've got a slightly reflective surface, so they actually look like mirrors. And they can fold in and out. All the other windows, except the front, are painted black, but the front is a nice transparent plain coloured plastic. Okay, 
our, and the, finally the light bar at the top. Let's get this guy transformed. To transform Ratchet, first take him to the back, just gently split this back section like so, pulling down these flaps, just loosening these sections here. Next, we want to bend him up like this and split that right down. We split the legs further apart and then just fold them out like this. So these have to be gently put out of the way to get them fully extended. We need to be cautious with these because they're only held on relatively weakly, although if you're careful you won't have a problem. Next, spreading the legs to give it a bit of room, we need to rotate these panels like this so that they can slide around the thigh. Once they get to the back, making sure this door is closed, the little bar here will go into a divot in that door that we just closed, so it's meant to fit exactly in that spot. And then if we can just wiggle this around like that, it'll fit nice and snug against the back leg. Doing the same on the other side, get this panel, put it in this position so it can slide past the thigh, close the back door, move the beam into the notch where the back door is, just here, and this one, I already got it while I was doing it, so it fits nice and snug. The heel, which is the only die cast, I think, in this toy goes back into that position. These flaps open and then the feet bend out. So we'll put the foot out on the other side. The heel is back. The foot bends out. Okay, now we need to bend the leg at the thigh to bring them more in line with the crotch section. Then on the back side, pull out this gun should have done this at the first place, I forgot about it. So I'll just put this gun aside and the wheels bend backwards into the section where the gun was stored. There are two little pegs here and two little divots here that will allow the crotch section to peg up into the rest of the body. If you give that a firm press, it'll stay there. And I've actually found after having this for about a week that it's better to do it at this stage when you've got a solid surface on the top to press together like this so that you get a nice firm joint. Just saves you having loose things at the top if you try to do it later on. The next thing we're going to do is just try to wiggle these apart a little bit like that. These are on a tab. We don't want to roughly pull it off. We just need to untab these wings at the side like that. Just lift them up enough so that you've got clearance, and then rotate the whole thing around like this, so that now you have the windshield, which will be the chest, on the other side. So turning the thing around like this, we can bend the arms out now. These mirrors will get in the way. We just pop them a little bit, then pop them back, pop it out a little bit, and then put it back. Now these wings that we had can rotate to the back, fold down behind the arms, rotate to the back, fold down behind the arms, stretch the arms out on both sides, bring them down and we want to rotate it so that the three millimeter peg or pole for the weapons that you can attach to it is on the outside front surface. The hands can be rotated to match that orientation. So bringing the arm down the other side, rotate around, fix the hand almost done now. Next we want to split this panel. Just be a little bit cautious. The reason, if you look under here, it's actually pegged in. So we want to split it but going up. You see what I mean? Leaving this peg hole free. Put your finger behind the head, rotate the head up. It pegs in right at the neck here. There's a little peg. Just peg straight in. On the back, Leaving this split, put your finger over where that hole is so you can apply force and then 
push it onto the peg that extends from the back of the neck. So that's locked in. The ratchet is transformed. The first thing I think I'll show is a scale shot. So here we have ratchet standing next to Classic's um, wheel jack. So wheel jack doesn't scale as nicely as I'd like with ratchet. Ratchet is just a little big, although I do think he's perfect for Classic's, and I think that Wheeljack is just a little small in Classic's. These guys together don't look exactly right. Taking him aside. Next, we have Ratchet standing next to Inferno. Now, I think this is really nicely done with the size comparison. Inferno was always a little bit bigger than Ratchet from memory, and I think they scale pretty perfectly. So he makes a good Voyager, and that's something else to note that in robot mode, he is just a tad off being a Classics Voyager. So he's gone from a deluxe vehicle into a voyager size robot. Next, we have Hegemon Megatron. So Megatron is nicely larger than Ratchet. You know, when I was doing my video review of Hegemon, I was saying how nice it was that he was just a little bit bigger than uh, Optimus and he was well scaled and it seems now I'm finding that with Ratchet just being a little bit bigger I'm wishing Hegemon was just a little bit bigger as well so it's a kind of arms race who's gonna up the size of classics the most but you know we're in a comfortable middle position at the moment and I'm still happy with the size of both these guys and finally for scale we have Ratchet next to Ironhide in his vehicle form So these guys are exactly the same. So you can see he goes from this up to this, which is a nice size, almost mass shifting. I, mean, I wouldn't quite call it mass shifting like some other figures have done, but still, he's, he's got a good... Uh, I think the way he does it is that he has no real wastage on him in his robot mode. There's not much garbage hanging off. I know these... Some people don't like these panels and they bend them backwards and stuff, but it's not... Not too much. All the panels that are there are quite compactly against the body and don't account for much of the mass in the toy. And that's how he's able to grow so much taller in his robot mode compared to his vehicle mode. Okay, posability. His head can rotate, it can rock side to side, and it can rock backwards and forwards. It's on a ball. The ball is a little bit constrained, but she still gets some nice expressibility from that joint. The shoulders are ratcheted seems to only make the sound in the upwards motion. He's got a swivel that can go the whole way around. His elbows are partially double jointed. They are actually double jointed, but in the in the proper configuration it's a little bit limited. Although some people put him put his arms backwards to get a much greater range of double jointedness. I don't like it this way because the screws show on the outside. I don't think it's meant to be this way. But, you know, personal preference, if you value the range of motion over the appearance, no problem doing that. He has his waist swivel, which actually I think can go the whole way around. His hips are balls. He has a swivel at the thigh. His ankles are ball joints. Um, the only weak point, really, is this... this die cast part at the back has a tendency to move too much. I like it in this position to help him stand up, but it does tend to move backwards just a little bit. Let's have a look at some of the weapons. First off, we've got this. So I said before it's a welding attachment. Uh, I, it looks like a welding attachment to me. I don't think Ratchet's any kind of pirate, so it's not a pirate hook. But we split it apart like this. This little bit has a tendency to fall out. Don't worry. That just pegs through his hand. Like so. A little bit stiff. And then the bottom half just snaps into place. But with, with this guy, you've got to make sure you sandwich that thing incorrectly. It's a little bit inconvenient, but it does work. So now, Ratchet is capable of repairs. Bzz. Hold still! Bzz, bzz. That's pretty cool. Next, 
On his other hand, if you choose, you can put one of these two saw weapons, just like with Ironhide. So again, that will peg in, and then the bottom half will just snap on underneath. So on one hand, you can fix somebody. On the other hand, you can hack them limb from limb with a circular saw, depending on your mood. Next, we have an assortment of tools. So looking at these one at a time, we've got a flathead screwdriver tool. We have a Phillips head screwdriver tool. We have a mallet. Or a sledgehammer, I'm not sure which. Yes, sledgehammer, I think it is. We have calipers. Or, may, yeah, calipers. It's got little notches for measurements, calipers. We have two different kind of uh, wrenches. Spanners, maybe. And a cup for tipping molten metal, maybe, or... Uh, measuring things. They're all kind of comical, to be honest. They're vastly oversized for any figure, and I think, I mean, I, I really like them. They're good toy attachments, it's got good play value, but uh, as far as being in scale with the figure himself, these are vastly oversized, unless maybe Ratchet's planning on doing some work on Fortress Maximus, but if he's planning to be working on any of the other regular sized Autobots, I can't imagine any Autobot in the classics lineup, having a bolt or a nut that would fit this massive spanner. But anyway, I like them. They're pretty cool. They've got to do something to differentiate Ratchet, and having these tools, uh, these recognisable tools, at least gives him some play options. Ratchet has the same bazooka as Ironhide. So the same story with that one. You can just click it into his hand, and he can hold it over his shoulder. And he has the same sniper rifle on a tripod, which he can either click into his other hand, or we can just store it on the back. He doesn't have the big silver gizmo. Uh, you could still use it with him, but he doesn't use this. doesn't come with him. He had the tools instead of that silver bit. Ratchet also has his fold-away gun that you saw me remove before from underneath, which is his kind of default weapon, his normal scale weapon. And he still comes with the deadly murder knife that uh, Ironhide had, although it doesn't really seem like in Ratchet's character to be hacking someone to death with this thing. Uh, I don't know, they probably was on the same sprue or something and they just had to keep it. I don't think I'll be using this with Ratchet. Ratchet also has these alternate heads. So if we can get a close look at these heads. I don't really like either one of these heads better than the one he ships with. With Ironhide, I've ended up displaying him with the smirking uh, IDW-ish face. But with Ratchet, I... I don't really like these. I don't think I'll be using them. If I had to use one of them, I would go with this one. It's nice enough. Uh, maybe it'll grow on me. I think the red would offer some more prominence to that head region that he doesn't have now being all white, but I'm pretty happy with what he's got. So we're going to put these aside. Okay, my final thoughts on Ratchet. Uh, I know a lot of this video has been rehash of my PPO5W review because these are essentially identical figures just with a few extra bits and pieces but again this is a really awesome figure and I think it's really good value of all these accessories it's very highly posable it's got a very very good build quality I've had no issues whatsoever with either one of these uh, no stress marks no broken bits no mold flash very poseable. It looks like it's meant to look in both modes and I, I can honestly highly recommend picking them both up. So 
Ratchet is not my favorite of the two. As I stated in the last video, I like the Ironhide just a little bit better. I like the color a bit better. I like the character a bit better. But this Ratchet is still freaking awesome. I mean, I'm not, I'm not disparaging Ratchet in any way. It's just that I like the Ironhide better. Um, if you had to pick up one, I guess it comes down to personal preference, which character you like the best. But there's no reason you shouldn't get Ratchet. If you're a Ratchet guy, grab Ratchet. If you've got the money to get both, get both. I did. I'm very glad that I did. Um, so thank you for watching my video review of PP05M Medical Specialist Ratchet from iGear. This has been Odean.